Hello, everybody. I am Baron Baptiste. Welcome to Disrupt the Drift. David Masters, how you doing, man? Fantastic. Always great to be here with you. Yeah. So I thought we'd jump into a conversation about what is it to discover for yourself rather than being influenced and shaped and molded by your environment or and or just external voices. The world we live in right now, there's so much groupthink and the world's so divided politically all the way down to the street level. People are, there's a lot of division and, and, and then you're left with, I need to choose a side and I need to take on just the commentary of whatever side I, I fit into. And then, or it's not even conscious. You're just taking on a narrative and others' narratives and cultural narratives and groupthink and what you hear on the news. And pretty soon you're not thinking for yourself anymore. But what is it to start anew and discover for yourself what you discover what's true uh, in life? Yeah. What do you see about this? The, the first thing that comes to my mind is this concept of self-mastery. Because the reason why we don't think for ourselves is because in a way we've been trained. We're, we're born to succeed, but we're programmed to fail. And when we fail, rather than looking within, we point a finger because we don't know what else to do. You told me to do this. I had a person that gave, came to me for counseling one time. She was having a problem with her mother. And I said, what you need to do is this, that, and the other thing. So she went back and did what I told her to do, and it all blew up in her face. And so she came back to me complaining. You told me to do this. And what I realized is I can't tell people what to do. That was like my first realization. This is probably about 30 years ago, maybe longer. I can't tell people what to do. I can tell them what I would do. And from that point, they have to decide whether or not it's what they want to do. And see, if you tell people what to do, you're taking away sort of the responsibility for concluding or realizing or understanding that it's the right thing to do. It's coming from you, not from them. And of course, it's, yeah. it could work, but it, a lot of times those kinds of things burn up right in your face. Yeah, I love that. Yeah, I think <laughs> giving people advice is terrible advice. <laughs> yeah. yeah, rather, I, I like to ask questions. It's, if someone brings a problem to me, I'll start saying, what do you see? Or what are some alternative there's a way of ways to see that same situation or that interaction or mm -hmm. issue with yourself. Or here's what I see. This is what it looks like to me. But what do you, and so what do you see? I, I can give my take on it. I can give what I see. But I think the real power for all of us, and I know for myself, the greatest mentors and teachers I've had in my life have been those who awaken the teacher within me, so to speak. They won't think for me. You don't want people thinking for you. And if, you, if people are thinking for you, it's okay to take other people's outlooks or points of views, but have an inner measuring stick. Does it measure up to your own intuition? Does it measure up to your own experience or knowing or common sense? And don't be gullible. Don't, but I like being, I'm skeptical. I like being skeptical, but skeptical is open. Skeptical is open. Cynical is when you're closed and you're fixed in your position, in your point of view. But skeptical, you have critical thinking in there. You, you, you can you think for yourself. You don't just buy in. If someone says something, it makes sense to me. I'm like, that, that's a phenomenal idea or that I, I like that, that taking a look at things in that way, through that light, through that lens and prism. But to discover for yourself, it, it's, not, it's easier said than done. Because in my experience, people do not want to discover for themselves. They actually want to be told what to do. But if you're always just taking what you're told to do, it, you're living by other people's answers mm -hmm. and other people's discoveries. And you never really live your own life, but you have to confront the a resistance. You have to confront your own resistance to actually doing bigger thinking for yourself and discovering for yourself. Uh, in, 
in teaching and, and leading trainings and things for years, I, at some point I really realized like people don't want to, they really resist discovering for themselves. They want you to give them the program or give them the answers or get, and, and it's maybe because we're trained like that from a young age yeah. and through the educational system that doesn't really train us to think it trains us to be good little trained seals. Yep. You get the answer, right? You get a gold star. You get the answer, right? You get a, a, a sardine, <laughs> like a trained seal, but to actually really think for yourself and to do bigger thinking it is a muscle that, you, that needs to be developed. There's a person named Patricia Sampson who said something very profound. She said, self-reliance is the only road to true freedom and being one's own person is the ultimate reward. The idea is not everybody, believe it or not, can be individual. And not everybody is wired and capable of being an individual because they have surrendered and in, in that surrender, they're looking for predictable outcomes. Right. You know like what I'm mo saying? Mo most people aren't living their own lives. They just aren't. They're, they're living the lives that their parents wanted them to live. Yeah. Or they're living the life that society says they should be living. Or their husband, their wife, their family pressure, or their religious religions pressure, or social media, like to fit in culturally and in mm -hmm. friend groups and, yep. and in social situations, you, you abandon yourself. Yeah. And that's the other side of it. When you start thinking for yourself, like actually, you also have to deal with the fallout of that. If you've been someone who's been living other people's lives. Yeah. yeah. Gandhi said this, the only tyrant I accept in this world is the still voice within. Mm, oh, truth right there. Isn't wow. it? Isn't that wow. great? Yeah. 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 That inner because tyrant. Because what happens? But, but you know why? Because what? it goes against our going along to get along in the world. Our inner conscience takes us, it's disruptive it, to our own playing God being judge, jury, executioner, inwardly, you shouldn't be doing that. You shouldn't be angry and resentful yeah. at people. And yet, you, if you got quiet enough, that voice, you let it catch up to you, that, it, that stillness, that quiet, small voice, that, what is it it's called? That, that, that voice of truth. It's a quiet, still yes. voice of truth within ourselves. Yes. That let goes me tell against you what... the grain of who we've been being and the ways we've been living in life. It goes against that. And, it's, and it would take us to scary places. The, Listen, yeah. we all have a lot of self-fulfilling prophecies. And one of those is perfectly articulated by Henry Ford, who said, if you think you can do it, or you think you can't do it, you're right. Yeah. <laughs> and so it's yeah. like, where is your front of mind? What where is the stuff that's in the front of mind thinking about whether you can or can't think for yourself? And here's another one for you. This is Grenville Kleiser. He said, learn to depend upon yourself by doing things in accordance with your own thinking. Mm. But then yeah. the question goes to what is my thinking? Because I started, ha this happened to me when I was 13 years old. What are my thoughts? Who am I? Is that my thought or is that, I used to question, where did those thoughts come from? And yeah, we're going into, we're doing a quick deep dive here on what's the origin of who you are and why. And you'll find that most of that comes from the outside world. It yeah. comes from other influences, other sources other than yourself. Now, not all your thoughts are great ideas, but at yeah. the same time, there's this process, conscious process of elimination. Yeah. I was talking to a friend the other day and I was listening to him speak and I, and he was saying things that were two, two things. He was saying things that were self negating self. What's that? Like self diminishing, cutting in on himself. And then also he was pulling these catchphrases that are like more cult cultural catchphrases about justice and being things that I'm like, wait, so I said, let's back up for a minute. I, I hear everything you're saying, 
And I said, but consider that your words, your speaking, what's coming out of your mouth is a representation of a world, your inner world. Our words reveal what's going on in our inner world. And it's interesting because you, if you really look, if you stop for a moment and just pause when someone's speaking, you, you get a lot about the world of that person and the yeah. world that person lives in inside themselves and where they're coming from. And I say that this, it's a good exercise to start listening to people mm -hmm. and get the world of where they're coming from. Because it also, when you do that, it starts giving you access to your world, your inner world. And you start listening to what's yeah. coming out of your mouth yeah. as, a, as clues for what, what's going on within you. And yeah. where are you sourcing life? Yeah. Where are you sourcing thinking? And yeah. I just have to say this, but yeah. thinking isn't a great place to look because you're not your thoughts. Right. And you have thoughts. And in thoughts, there's just doubts or there's all these stories or meaning you give things. And it's all this uh, commentary about life, about others, about yourself. But, but what if you came out of thinking and you got present? Because when we really get present, like you stop, pause, drop in to yourself, drop into your bones, get present. You'll notice there's an absence of thinking. Uh, Eckhart Tolle said, when you're really, when you're truly listening, there's an absence of thinking. And in the, the whole world, you get access to what's actually going on. I yeah. was listening Rather to Rather than a, having a conversation with yourself in your head. That I, I noise. Think I, yeah. I sent you the link to the interview I saw with Joe Rogan and Elon Musk's younger brother. I think his name is Kendall. Yeah, I didn't see he, it, but yeah, I didn't watch it. Yeah, something so profound because he's a meditator. Yeah. And he said he learned meditation from somebody who he's friends with, a, a prominent physicist, I believe. But he said, when you get quiet, you can actually f sense a presence in that quietness. Mm. Mm. And he was referring to God. He was. Yeah. The idea is that if you get quiet long enough, maybe you will sense that presence. And now it could be an evil presence or it could be the ultimate presence. But. I'll just finish off because yeah. we're at that point. Yeah. This proverb, it says, the proverb warns that you should not bite the hand that feeds you, but maybe you should if it prevents you from feeding yourself. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And you know what? Sometimes breaking off with people who are controlling you to your detriment, yeah. it feels like you're biting the hands that feed you, but ex actually you'll get to feed yourself at some point. You'll get to determine what goes into your mind, your mouth, and every other part of your life. Yeah. 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 Really powerful. Yeah. I'll wrap up on this thought is when you get present and you, you pause, you drop in, get present, what you have access to is a you then get present to a presence greater than yourself, Absolutely. a power greater than yourself. And in that, the presence of a power greater than yourself, you suddenly see life, self, others differently through a new, from a new view. And in that new view, you're suddenly disrupting those old thought patterns, old yeah. stories, and you start seeing an, through a new light and from a new light, a light of truth and higher guidance in congruence with your conscience. Thank yeah, you, you start Thank operate, you. you start operating at a higher frequency, and our yeah. frequency gives us what we see. All right, you all, thank you, and stay true, stay bold, and send in your questions to Disrupting the Drift at BaronBaptiste.com. Watch us on YouTube. Please leave your comments. If you're watching on YouTube, drop in some comments. What's your take on all this? Love to hear from you, how it landed for you. And until next time, peace be with you.